Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Dare Show podcast. If you think I sound a little different this week, it's because I went and got a vocal surgery called a cold. Excuse me. I don't know what this is. It's a cold, it's sinuses, it's something. But anyways, let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. So, um, we got a lot going on, as Mary Crosby says. You know what? The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, they started back. It's giving boring. It's giving... They need another girl in the mix, but I understand why there's not another girl in the mix. In the mix. Um, I don't know. Jenny... Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, like unfortunate for like the overall picture. Journey's not there anymore. Mary's not there anymore. But people miss Mary. I don't miss Mary because Mary didn't like those girls. Mary hated each and every last one of those girls. She didn't get along with any of them except for like Meredith. It's just like she didn't like them. So why keep her on the show? She was never like there. She was never there in participation. I'm like, they just should have, I don't know. I don't know what to say about Salt Lake City. But anyways, um, so this week, Patti LaBelle, she did this grand interview with CBS Morning. And why did they do that interview? I guess to say I'm still relevant and still here. I don't know what that interview was for. Uh, the music announcement, maybe? I don't know. But anyways, in that interview, they talked. Uh, it was a really good interview. She looked really good. Uh, did they talk about anything new? No, not really. Uh, but anyways, people are speculating and saying that she is doing a song with Mariah Carey on her new album. I beg to differ. That segment was a, like two topics into one. The over over the vo- the voiceover lady, the lady who was doing the interview, her voiceover said, "Patty LaBelle is godmother and mentor to a lot of women in the industry, like Mariah Carey, Lettucey, or whoever she said, and um, why well, I was about to say Nina Simone, um, Lettucey and." jasmine sullivan who are also going to be who is also or are is also going to be a part of her new album or new music yada yada that kind of verbiage that's what she said i'm not taking it as mariah and patty are doing or maybe i am taking it as Okay, so a couple of weeks ago when mariah did the global citizens festival Somehow, Patty's name came up into, like, one of the comments, or, like, the captions, and I saw that Patty should, okay, but, no, 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 okay, so I thought Patty and her were going to do a song at the Global Citizens, by the way, Mariah's Global Citizens was kind of underwhelming, I thought they were going to give her, like, an hour, they only gave her 30 minutes, she sang, you know, a couple of songs, I don't think that We Belong Together was live, I believe Hero was live, Hero was really good. I don't believe the We Belong Together was live. The ending that everybody's talking about. But that's just my opinion. Um, but it was okay. Same dress. Her hair looked better during rehearsal. Whatever, whatever. But I don't think Patty and her are doing a song on her new album. What I really want to know is what's going on with Patty. I mean, what's going on with Mariah and the Clark sisters. Last year, they recorded some kind of song. And we have yet to hear about it or hear from it. So, that's not all that but anyways i don't i don't think i don't think they're doing a song together i think they just conglomerated two topics and didn't end off one topic but we'll see it's you know it's hopeful we'll see we'll see we'll see um but as far as like jasmine sullivan she said that a couple times so i kind of believe her as you know what i still believe about patty patty was talking about um I was watching some old interview she did on Watch What Happens Live, and she was talking about how I Will Always Love You was actually supposed to be <laughs> actually supposed to be her song. And I'm cracking up because I kind of didn't really believe it. I was just like, you know, it's just one of the things, you know, the things you probably be saying out here. But, Patty, okay, when she says it, like, multiple times over the years, I'm like, oh, okay. I Will Always Love You was supposed to be Patty's song. But it's just like... Eh, how did that happen? Because I think they handpicked 
I will always. Lo- I think. I think David Foster handpicked. I will always love you for that movie. I don't think it was shot. He didn't make it seem like it was being like shopped around. I don't know. It's interesting. But anyways, we'll see about what happens with Miss um, LaBelle. She's been out here doing some um, some cute private events. I guess that's where she's been. I don't know. I, I meant to look up the, her touring. You know, there's a few dates here and there for the next three or four months until the end of the year. But anyways, we love Patty LaBelle. Um, I'm still working on the when a woman loves in a couple weeks uh the anniversary so if you have anything you want to tell me about leave it in the comments you don't have to subscribe that's also what i want to say you don't have to subscribe you don't have to like this video you don't have to like the podcast however you listen to it but please please if you have a if you want to say something leave a comment or if you know any information about the when you when a woman loves era which is an interesting era, please leave a comment or hit me up on Instagram at my love money tonight. Next topic. Oh, okay. So last week I was talking about, um, what's the song called? Oh, hold my hand. And I meant to clarify that I was like, okay, hopefully we'll get a good vocal performance from Lady Gaga for on hold my hand because the Chromatica tour, I said this a couple of times, I think now the Chromatica tour, which I've been studying, <laughs> and listening to nonstop for a month now. Like I said last week, I'm still on that journey. I'm still trying to break away. I'm still trying to get sober from the Chromatica journey, the Chromatica tour journey. Um, The Chromatica tour was better vocally in Europe, but when she came over here, it was, uh, she went to Japan. uh, By the time she saw me, by the time I saw her in Houston, uh, like it was, it was decent, but it was just like, okay, you need to, you know, take a moment, reset. But hopefully, we'll get like a live version for it. Um, I didn't see any Oscar nominating, but the Grammy submissions came out today, and Interscope nominated for like best song for media form, video, or something like that, best <laughs> record of the year and song of the year. So. You know, we'll see what happens with that. Somebody, you know, in the comments were saying um, on Twitter were like, well, why did she submit it for best pop vocal? And then somebody was like, well, will she have a good chance of that? And I'm just like, well, will she have a good chance at record of the year? Like, it's just being nominated. It's not that it's winning. If you're going to send it to best, um, which, you know, everybody does. If you're going to do it for album of the year and song of the year send it for best pop vocal hello send it to best pop vocal if you're gonna send it you know send it to all of them um what's next kelly kelly Rowland. kelly Rowland. is kelly Rowland retired i kind of didn't realize this like it makes sense with her actions. But I kind of didn't realize this until I was watching her Angie Martinez interview, which is a pretty interesting interview. Um, Angie Martinez, the radio lady, she uh, has a podcast. Kelly looked really delicious on the podcast. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and Angie was just like, the main focus of the podcast was talking about Kelly's uh, father and reconnecting with her father. Angie kind of had a similar story. And so towards the end they talked about destiny's child and kelly was like i mean angie was like i really enjoyed you guys at coachella like that whole moment we all love you guys together and kelly was like you know what i enjoy performing alone but i really really enjoy performing with my girls and it's just like the word she was using was making it seem like Oh, she said, she said, it takes a lot for me to get out and perform these days. So I'm like, oh, wait, are you retired? (laughs) 
he semi-retired from the music industry. So I kind of tweeted that, and one of her fans said, actually, yeah, she kind of is semi-retired from the music industry. She's focused, or she didn't, they didn't say semi-retired. They just, like, agreed with me, and just, like, which was just, ugh, and was just, like, yes. But she is focusing more on acting. And I was like, oh, okay. It makes sense. Because, you know, like, I think I said this last week or something. I've said, or maybe in my mind I've said this. I'm like, Kelly is not out here singing. She's not out here performing. (coughs) Like a regular artist would. She's not out here touring. Whether it's, you know, doing, you know, five spot dates or promotional stuff. She, like that last album, she didn't sing a lot for i think she did like two or three songs i mean two or three different singing maybe two singing events other than that it wasn't a lot of promotion and so i'm just like okay she but you know she's it must be a lot to go out to tour um as a mother and she was talking about how motherhood is a very important aspect of her life and there was some kind of big deal on the table and she decided to go home and be with her her child and take care of the kid or whatever the kid, do whatever type needed um instead of working so i was just like okay cool so it's just it's very interesting i didn't realize that she was actually retired but like i said it makes sense it makes a lot of sense um which is unfortunate because kelly has a beautiful voice she has a great discography and I want, you know, our singers to sing, but do what pays the bills the most. I'm, of course, acknowledging, you know, the music industry isn't necessarily a money-making industry like it was before. Do what is personally adaptive to your new life. So we just got to give it up. What's not personally adapting to my new life is Beyonce and these enigmatic 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 i'm gonna make up a word enigmatic type behavior she's giving us with no visuals and no stuff she's been on this party tour club renaissance i believe it's called at the where she's like going around i guess you know just playing the album at different uh clubs what's what's it restaurants I'm confused about why this is happening. Great looks, fantastic looks, especially the last couple looks we saw in Paris. But why is this happening? Is this the unofficial act that we don't know about? Like, I just like, we're like searching in the dark for answers. At these club renaissance, parties is there like a vip section is she interacting with the fans if you've been to the club renaissance in new york or paris please hit me up and let me know because i'm just like what's going on (coughs) there's allegedly no phones allowed but somebody's taking pictures and video What's going on? Is she interacting with you guys? If you guys are interacting, are you guys asking her the questions? Or are you just, just bopping to the music and fangirling? Like, y'all know. Y'all need to get your journalistic uh, endeavors, endeavors on and ask her, where are the visuals? What's next? Um, what's the next single? Well, I already know what the next single is. But it's just like, we're just searching in the dark, and I don't prefer really like it. I don't know why my last podcast got... A cute number of um, um, of views the last week, but thank you for listening. Like I said, leave a comment. Hopefully, we'll get some answers to Renaissance. So, hate my heart. I hate my heart. Carrie Underwood, she started her tour very, very soon. Um... Starting her tour, I think, like, today or this weekend or something like that. Cool, cool, cool. She also announced that her next single is going to be Hate My Heart. 
asked me how I feel about that. And I would tell you that it's not like a go-to song on the album. It's not a song she sang a lot. Like, I thought Pink Champagne was going to be the next single, the way she was talking about it. The cover, the the video cover, the I mean, the cover art is beautiful. It's not like a go-to. Like, okay, hopefully it does well. I'm not doubting it, but it's not a go-to. It's a cute song. Yeah, that's all I got to say. Um, this is what she says about it. Hit My Heart was definitely a part of my desire to have a fun, to have fun on this album. I wanted songs that would be exciting to perform live and would fill up an arena. And that's, and that's exactly what we're about to do with the Denim and Rhinestones tour. Okay, add that in there. This one is definitely going to get up to get everyone up on their feet and have a good time. It was great writing Hit My Heart with Hillary Lindsay. By the way, Hillary, Hillary Lindsay is being inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. I think like this weekend or something with Shania Twain, which is incredible. Hillary Lindsay, all you know from like working, uh, she worked with Carrie for like ever. She wrote, um, co-wrote um, A Million Reasons with Lady Gaga. She's an incredible writer. Um, but she wrote it with Hillary Lindsay and David Garcia, who I love collaborating with, and also get to work with Hardly. Wait, what? And also, and also getting to work with Hardy, Hardy, who brought a cool vibe and energy to the track. <coughs> so um, that's what she says about it. I think it's going to be shipped off or impacted by radio later in the month. It's like two more weeks of the month, whatever, whatever. Um, hate my heart. It's not, it was not what I expected. I'll just say that. Same way, I think, like, drinking alone. I have the same sentiments. Like, I like, I love drinking alone now. But when it was, like, the next single, I was like, drinking alone? Okay. I guess. And I think drinking alone came after... So fell, da, da. whatever. However, my favorite song goes. I think my favorite songs are the songs I don't know the words to when I have to think about them. Um, but what do you guys think about Hit My Heart being the next nice single? I mean, thanks for getting a new single. But Hit My Heart, okay. Uh, all right, Carrie. All right. All right. Welcome back to the Dare Show podcast, where I talk music, I talk reviews, I talk whatever I want to rant about. So, the last topic I believe I have on the list today, I don't have a song of the week. I've just been listening to Chromatica nonstop, nonstop. Alice, Enigma, Replay, um, Hold My Hand. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get through this Chromatica journey. I'm going to be sober of Chromatica soon, I guess. I know who's going to be at the top of my 2022 Spotify list. I know who's there already. For sure, she's there. Jenna Jackson. So, so cool. Last week we talked about how the 25th anniversary of The Velvet Rope <laughs> was released. We put out like a new edition um, for some reason on Spotify, the regular <laughs> album doesn't have the last, like, two songs. <coughs> also, nothing isn't on there. Nothing's not on Spotify. I think something from the design of a decade isn't on Spotify. They're just, like, taking all her songs off for some reason. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell? But anyways, her Vibe um, magazine article came up. Um, Somebody was like, I think it was Vibe. That was like, let's revisit this article, which was, it was a really actually interesting article. Three, two, a couple things I took away from it. No, one thing I took away from it. Janet is honest 
until she's not. And maybe it's just like a part of her keeping, you know, herself, her private life private, but it's just like, what's more private than your brother? Like your marriage, your secret marriage is more private than your brother? Huh? Your sexual fantasies are more private than your brother? Okay, I guess. She was very honest in the article. She was talking about, which we could correlate with the documentary. They were lining up. Shit was lining up, right? They talked about the scream. Let's just get that out of the way. Scream and how um, the article, the interviewer, who is, I'm forgetting her name, but she's married to the dude that used to do stuff on MTV the light-skinned dude, he might be, like, Spanish and black or something like that. But he had, like, curly hair, the light-skinned dude. He's married to this, I think her name is Dylan or something. I think it starts with a D. I should have wrote it down. Because shout out to her. I did not know that they were married or that she was, like, a musical journalist like he was. But anyways, Scream. She talked about in Scream. She was like, um, I like Scream, but... Oh, they end up talking about, like, what happened to their relationship. Because, okay, <laughs> hold on, let me get it together. She was asking Janet, is there competition with your brother? And she, Janet said, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I was expecting her to say no. She's like, but it's like a good, you know, fun, it's nothing crazy competition with my brother. I'm like, okay. So then they, um, she was like, well, when's the last, I'll just get into it. She was like, when's the last time you talked to your brother? And she was like, two years ago. <laughs> two years ago at the 1995 Billboard Awards or some American music, some award show. I think the his son had been born. And Janet was like, I didn't do my speech. I didn't go really to the show because I had to go to the hospital and see, you know, the, the son. And so she was like, oh, I'm like, God damn, two years? Jeez Louise. Wait, I think I screenshotted it. But I was just like, two years? Like, I cannot, I, I don't understand that. I don't think... Okay, I didn't speak that part. But I don't think I could, like, go about two years without talking to a family member that I'm close to. That I'm in the same business as. Like, it just doesn't make sense. It's crazy. It's actually crazy. <coughs> um. Yeah, so she talked about not talking to him for two years. There's, like, this competition with Michael. Then, you know, she's, like, she's very open with that. And then she goes into the lady's, like, you been Renee is marriage on the line. You been with Renee a long time. Do you think you'll get married to him? She's, like, well, they had already gotten married back in, like, the late 80s or something like that. She's, like, well, you know, we've been friends for a while um, before we got married I mean, before we uh, became in a relationship. So now, you know, I'm just like, marriage, I don't think I want to get married. It's like, okay, but you're already married. You're already secretly married. (sighs) That wouldn't fly today. Because I'm like, TMZ stays at the courthouse. Anyways. She's very open with her struggles, her identity. She's like, this album, it took me forever to write this. It took me 26 years to write this album because it's all my experiences, what I've been feeling with, my image, the losing weight, yada, 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 all that, all that, all that shit, all that shit. And I'm just like, wow, okay, you're very open. And then we go into talking about sex, and I'm just like, I don't believe this part. She was asked her... So is sex about bondage and and domination for you? And are you and your lover playing fun games with power? You mean like pain? Are we into pain? Yes. Are you into pain, Ms. Jackson? No. No. But I'm, I have, I'm told I have a high tolerance for pain. 
How do you know? From the things I've gotten pierced, I suppose my nipple, my tongue, your tongue hurts to get pierced. Um, she talked about, you know, wanting a soft rope burn. Um, I'm getting deeper into my fantasies. I'm into what I like. I love that song, you know, rope burn. My need tonight. My need. Wait, my need. My need. That's what the song is called. And you know, other songs are very, like, sexual with Janet. Especially anytime it plays, baby. So it's just like, for her to say, you know, I'm just living throughout my, I'm just singing my fantasies. It's like. Damn, girl, you're a really good singer, man. Because you got me convinced that you stay in the boudoir, busting it wide open with a rope burn on your shoulder, up in your thigh, vibrating your, it, vibrating you into the sky. Like, she's very, very... um. It's very convincing. You know what? Also, it's so funny that... Great article. Like I said, she's very honest until she's not. Also, it's so interesting that she wrote all these nasty-ass songs with Jimmy and Terry. Like... Oh, my gosh. Like, I, that, that's... Fascinating. It was really, really revelatory of Jimmy and Terry. Are they the vessel? Wait, is Janet Jackson their vessel? I don't know. Um, Janet, oh, she had this cool little party. She's been going live every day, eating, drinking, dancing, having a little fashion week fun. <coughs> it's been fun seeing Janet. It really has. One thing that really gets on my nerves is, like, those celebrities that only post something when it's time to promote something. It's like, you've been gone for six months, and all of a sudden you were to say, hi, guys. <laughs> but whatever, that's their business. Thanks so much for listening. Next week, hopefully, we'll have some good, more fun stuff to talk about. But until then, like I said, Janet, she's very honest until she's not. Um, what do you guys think about that Vibe article? It's still online. You can go check it out. Look and see. Pop in, lock in, drop in, read it. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say this week. Thanks so much for listening. I'm on YouTube. Got to remember to put this YouTube video up tomorrow. I'm on YouTube, Spotify podcast, Apple podcast. You don't have to like the video. You don't have to like the podcast. Just leave a comment. Or if I have a question up or attached to the podcast, answer the question or something. Um, yeah, thanks so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And peace. I actually want that one. Okay. Or who are we making cookies for, boo? The no. whole family.